episode, let me talk into the mic here, <laughs> episode 29 of the We Are Everywhere podcast. Um, today, I have on another fellow podcaster. Um, I was on the Helping Friendly podcast doing a recap of the uh, show at DT, or excuse me, Pine Knob, uh, where we got kind of rained out partially. Um, and one of the co-hosts is on with me today, Miss Megan Gleon. How are you? <laughs> Hi, I'm good. How you doing, Clay? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for uh, taking the time and uh, returning the favor, so to speak. Um, I'm excited to have you on. Yeah, I was so excited when you came on HF Pod. So I'm really yeah. proud to be here too. And it's wild because you know whenever whenever I started this podcast, you know it was one of those things because I work in radio. It's one of those things. I have another podcast, and I've been in into fish since forever. And I was like, <laughs> it, I just had this moment where I was like, why am I not doing a fish based podcast? And it was just yeah. like this light bulb went off, and then so I started like looking up other fish based podcasts, found like helping friendly podcasts under the scales, all this stuff, and I was like, wow. And then so I was like, this is cool. I was like, but. I've got to find a lane here. <laughs> you know, I yeah, was like, I got to make sure like that I'm not stepping <laughs> on anyone's toes. I'm like, okay, attendance bias does this. Helping friendly podcast does this. What can I do? And I was like, I'm just going to talk to people. <laughs> I was yeah. like, that's pretty, that's pretty easy. Like that's pretty good. So um, tell everyone first off, if they're not familiar with you or the helping friendly podcast, um, who you are, what the Helping Friendly Podcast is about. And while you're doing that, I'm going to try and figure out why our names are not popping up here. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, so my name's Megan, and I joined the Helping Friendly Podcast about a year ago now, like November, December 21. And um, that was just a product of me harassing them until they <laughs> let me come on the show. It's really? really? happened. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so basically what happened is I was listening to them a lot during quarantine. You know, there's like not a lot to do. I was just like binging old episodes. And they had an episode where they talked about Europe 96. And they were mm. like, we don't know anybody who's been on this tour. Like, what was this like? We can't imagine it. And I went on that tour. And so I reached out to them. And I was like, I went on this tour. And I remember everything. I journaled. I have photos. Like, I was 19. I was super into it. And it was my first time in Europe. And I'd love to talk to you about it. So during quarantine, they brought me on to do like a – just like a Facebook, you know, kind of live thing. And it was so fun and I loved it so much. And I just harassed them anytime. Like, can I come do a recap? Can I come do this? Like, hey, are you talking about these JFAT shows, you know, at Radio City? I, I was there. I want to talk to you about it. And finally, they um, they agreed to let me come on all the time. So it's been an absolute dream. I love that. The persistence, the, you know, making it, you know, <laughs> it's so funny because that's how... I got the job that I have right now, actually, is I just kept, you know, hey, can I, can I do this? Can I do this? Can yeah. I do this? Can I do this? <laughs> just keep showing up. And so that's awesome that you started out as just a guest and now you're a co-host. That's, that's yeah. really cool. You um, just got to ask for what you want, you know? Yeah. 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 Manifest. Yeah. Manifest. Exactly. <laughs> I'm all about that. <laughs> um, so your fish journey, well, let's spell this back up. When was the first time that you remember hearing fish and you're like, oh, okay. And then what was the moment where you were like, this is my life and my personality now? <laughs> <laughs> like we it. all have that clicking moment. <laughs> yeah, my personality, I know. And my family would definitely agree with that statement. Oh, I think sure. all of our families would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, in high school, you know, I was – in the mid nineties in high school. And I was a sophomore and I wanted to hang out with these cool senior boys and they were really into the Grateful Dead. And I was like, whatever they're into, I'm going to do it. Like I want to hang out with them. And I didn't know that it was going to become like this lifelong obsession for me. You know, I started listening to the dead and I was like, this is amazing. And I, you know, quit the cheerleading team and, you know, started like <laughs> trying to go on TED tour in my summers and like, you know, it totally changed my life. And, um, and then someone gave me a copy of Rift. I think it was probably my junior year, late junior year that summer. And I just completely fell in love with this cassette because that's how old I am. <laughs> and I was like, you know, you could open the cassette and like all the lyrics were in there. And, you know, it was that cool. beautiful, like 
you know, artwork. ripped cover artwork. Yeah. yeah. Concept album. And I was like, what is this? Like, it was so different from the Grateful Dead, but so many of the things that I liked about the dead were there. And it was just, I was really into Rift. And then I started collecting, you know, I had been collecting dead bootlegs for a while and I started collecting fish bootlegs. And then they came to my town in Grand Rapids. I lived outside Grand Rapids, Michigan. No way. And in a suburb. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Midwesterner. Yeah. Um, so I was, they came to Grand Rapids and they actually were going to go to Ann Arbor and Grand Rapids that fall of 94. So that was the fall of my senior year. And I got tickets to both shows. And then I was in the senior play and I, our dress rehearsal was the night of Ann Arbor. So I couldn't go to that. But oh. then we lucked out because the night of the Grand Rapids show was, it was a tech rehearsal. And so the people acting in the play were there early and then we could leave at six. And I just gunned it the 30 minutes downtown in my car with a friend and was like, you know, pulled up to like the Grand Rapids Theater, which is like the DeVos Hall, which is where I saw like Les Mis and, you know, all these like Broadway musicals that would come to town. And I got to to see Fish. And it was just, I was like the 18th row and they opened with my friend, my friend, and it just floored me. Like, yeah. I just couldn't believe the energy coming off the stage it was ferocious you know it was 94 fish right so it's like God. aggressive and fast and hungry and playful and they were engaging with us so much you know that was when they were touring with um Reverend Mosier and they were really working on bluegrass so they were doing acoustic sets and yeah. so they were coming right up to the edge of the stage and I remember they fishermen had like the mandolin and someone yelled out like, I love the mandolin and and Trey's like, since you love the mandolin, Fish is going to do a private mandolin solo for you. And then he like did it. And then he did like this pose. And to me, it was like, you know, when I would go to see the dead, it was like they would just stare off and you were just experiencing them. It wasn't like you were involved in a relationship, you know. And here was a band that was like, they seemed just as surprised to be like where they were. You know, they, they just – they seemed so kind of like grateful and connected with their audience in a way that I had never experienced and their sense of humor and playfulness and kind of joy. Just, it was, it just blew me away. I have like journal entries that's like four pages long after their first show because <laughs> I have my first show. Cause I was just like, this band is, you know, it was just, it just blew me away. And I was done hooked from right, right then, like fully in. I don't blame you because I usually, and I'm sure you do too. Like talking about the music part of it or jams and I like start hearing them in my head I'll get goosebumps like and even like obviously like listening to the music too but I got goosebumps just then when you were explaining that like the 90 your first show in 94 yes. because it's so funny I mean it's not funny it's it's good on their part really because you know you see some bands that will get you know a little bit of fame and then mm -hmm. they're just kind of like oh we made it and coast and then that's really like the level that they stay at and that's why i love even 93 and 94 oh, yeah. because they're on to something they know that they've got something and they could have just been like yeah no this is our this is our shtick this is what we do you know we'll keep doing what we're doing and stay in yeah. this lane but they every and you can hear it in every year like the progression and just boom boom better 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 equipment better lights better songwriter it's it they just keep you know progressing and you mentioned you made the point of 94 being hungry mm -hmm. you can hear that in basically every song of every show they're playing like it's their last time to ever pick up an instrument and it's like it's one of my favorite years to listen to because it's so raw but also really polished as well they're so oh, locked yeah. in man i'm jealous I, yeah, in 94, <laughs> I was four years old, so <laughs> neither one of my parents were into the dead or fish. So it's like, I didn't really have a chance to see them or know about them. But like going back and listening to all the stuff from 1.0 and like the watching them grow is just insane. And that's awesome that you got to experience that. It's like as your first jump in, that's so cool. Yeah. I mean, November 94 is just really <sighs> exciting fish. That is I mean, the it's best month in 94. Yeah, it's really good. And, and you know, I, I think of like even the Bowie from that show, there's just like, there's this real expansiveness, but like you said, tightness too. I think that, you know, they're gearing up to play 
MSG for their first time next yeah. month. You know, they yeah. know that. Like, they're uh-huh. like, we're about to headline Madison Square Garden next month. Like, like this is huge. This is huge. Like, we've made it, right? Like, this is the pinnacle. And I think that that knowledge of, like, pushing towards – I mean, 95 is such a peak year for fish, right? And you think sure. about, like, what was happening – 95 happened because of 94, you know, which happened because of 93. Like, you're saying they're building up. <laughs> yeah. But they've always – always, always stayed hungry. Even today, they're still evolving. And I think that's like, when you think about like, you know, why I think 2021 was such an awesome year for fish was because, you know, they were still creating that new sound, you know, they were inspired um, because of the sci-fi soldier stuff. And they're, you know, continually trying to make something new, which I think sets them apart from any other band. A hundred percent. Yeah. And you mentioned, you know, 2021, that tour, um, I just remember being blown away because it was like show after show. Um, and, you know, we can find years in 3.0 to where you're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 2013, you know, that was the year where they were like busting out a lot of good Carinis. And, you know, mm. you can kind of but comparing 3.0 to like 1.0 isn't really fair because they're in a different yeah. stages of their career, so to speak. Um, but I just remember being blown away last year and being like this feels like a different era this feels like a different gear of fish and you know coming out with sigma oasis and i was just like this feels like something is happening (laughs) you know (laughs) and that might not be everyone's experience but like because i'll hear some people talk about like you know oh they'll name off a year that was special to them they'll be like wow this Mm -hmm. tour was great but in my head i'm like I remember, you know, there's a couple of key jams, but it, it it didn't feel special to me. But 2021 was like, this feels like something new is happening. <laughs> it felt really yeah, good. Yeah, well, I think anytime you, pre- you know, prevent Trey from performing live, you're going to get point. an explosion. You know, I think <laughs> that he was just waiting. Like we all were, right? And mm-hmm. I think that that summer of 2021, you know, Right. Then putting out Sigma Oasis in April and then coming out and just absolutely exploding. They had so much new music. They had so many new sounds. You know, we didn't know, right, what they were doing with Sci-Fi Soldier, but that bled into these crazy monster space jams that were just so cool and just so fun to listen to. And and then leading into fall of last year, which was, I think, absolutely phenomenal tour, start to finish, just perfect like each of those shows has just something absolutely magical in it yeah i agree um so you're so going back to your first show you said the first show was in grand rapids or in ann arbor Mm -hmm. grand rapids Grand Rapids. yeah um after that first show you're that's you said that's when you were hooked you were like this is it um how long after that were you like okay waiting on, you know, tour dates. How many other shows did you see in 94? Or was that the only one and then you picked up in 95? Yeah, that was only the only one. I was in high school and have any money. Sure. You know, I couldn't really travel or go anywhere. Um, right. So I had to wait till the summer, you know, and I think they mm-hmm. did New Year, you know, they did the show in um, MSG in 94. And then they did the two nights at the Boston Garden, I think for New Year's. But then mm-hmm. they wouldn't tour for like, six months, you know, they wouldn't come back until the summer. So that summer I saw, um, I, the first chance I had to see them again was when they went to Deer Creek in, um, 95. So it was like oh, 622, wow. 95. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, an iconic one. Oh my God. That show, oh my God, that show <laughs> was one of the best nights of my life. Like just, oh my God. I mean, it was like, I was 18. I graduated high school. Like you know, a couple weeks before and I was going on dead tour that summer actually. And part of it, not like the whole thing, but I was going to sure. do like the Midwest and go up to like Pittsburgh and come back down and, um, kind of was picking and choosing shows a little bit. Um, I was going to be at Deer Creek like two weeks later for the dead shows there when they would cancel one because of the, you know, everybody busted through the gates and like, oh, it was yeah. just, or jump the fence. I'm sorry. It was just like a crazy Gate dead crashers. tour. So, yeah. Dead yeah. Tour nuts that summer. But I was wanted to see the show in Deer Creek. And so I had been to Deer Creek, I think to see the dead the summer before. I don't really remember, but I had been there before. And so I kind of knew where I was going, but like in 95, when you would go to Deer Creek, you would always get lost because it's just like 
cornfields and it's so different from what it, I haven't been back in so long, but apparently it, it's, you know, there's like hotels and like it's more. Yeah. Like set and you up don't now, have, commercial. you know, your phone sitting there going, yeah, turn left on no, Deer you're Creek on like, Boulevard. You're on like a paper <laughs> map. Okay. Like I am old AF, like this is like a paper map, you know? And I'm right. just like, Oh, where do I go? So my friends and I are like, we get kind of lost and we wanted to find this campground that we had been to and we didn't know how to find it. And so we pull over um, into this like little grocery store, I don't know, gas station place. And we're like, we're sure. going to ask somebody. And like this guy walks up and I'm like, oh my God, it's the most beautiful boy I've ever seen. I'm going to ask him where the campground is. You know, I'm like, uh, you know, he's like dreadlocked and I was just sure. like in love immediately. And <laughs> so I asked him and he's like, you can follow us. And, you know, so we went back and followed them and we ended up like parking near them and in this campground and setting up campground near them. And we went into the show and my friend and I had, they had lawn seats and we had like really good pavilion seats. And so we oh, nice. were up there like in the pavilion and that's one of the shows that they released for like dinner on a movie and Trey's in like a crazy outfit. He's in these like satin pants and like Christian <laughs> yeah. has those like crazy glasses on. I mean, they just yeah. were nut jobs then. And you know, it was 95. I mean, they talk about making it like they were like, we're the best band on the planet. Like, you know, it, yeah. it was the year, right? Like they were just, they were so good. And and I remember that show. I mean, it's not like the perfect show, but the energy and just, you know, there's Tila and there's just so many amazing moments from that show. And my friend and I were just like totally blissed out, just having this like next level experience. And then, you know, we got to like take these guys we met and go back to the <laughs> campground, like in a drum circle all night, you know, like it was just like, it was just, I was like, the world is my oyster, you know, I'm 18. Like, yeah. Yeah fish tour like I was yeah so I saw them as soon as I could then and um after that you know I I actually was going to go to college out west because I wanted to see the dead out west that's really like my motivation sure and then you know Jerry dies and so I'm like what am I going to do and so then I saw a bunch of stuff out west in the fall um when they did the California run when fish did and so then I just was basically like transferred all of that energy to fish. Into fish. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And I just hearing you say that made me have a thought because um Goose is in the scene now. And just based off of, you know, age where fish is, you know, I mean, they're we're all getting older. They're getting older. Um, and then you have this new jam band kind of bubbling up, you know, causing people it's like to pay attention. It's like, what's going on over there? And I'm just so grateful that fish is in a good and healthy place um, at this point in their career compared to where I won't lump in the debt, but just where Jerry was. Oh, yeah. That's the comparison I'm making, I guess. I'm glad that everyone's healthy and happy and in good head spaces. So that same totally. type of tragedy doesn't happen with us. And then we're all like, ah, where are we going now? Goose, let's all go. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and that's Can not a imagine? slight to oh, goose God. at all. Um, I've just started the process of exploring goose. Mm -hmm. Have you explored goose at all? Or, or yeah, what are you? yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm super into goose. They're gotcha. awesome. Yeah, I saw them. I mean, I've only seen them twice. I saw the Radio City shows so that was pretty phenomenal when yeah. trey came um i wasn't supposed to go the second night but then um i got offered a ticket and i heard trey was coming and i was like i am in i think oh, it's so you phenomenal. kind of mm -hmm. you kind of knew because there was stuff like on the internet people were like oh is there a trey yeah. set in you know so you were kind of expecting it yeah yeah gotcha. i was like this is happening yeah i actually ended up like seriously in the doghouse with my family about that because i was not supposed <laughs> to go that night <laughs> some family in town and I was like oh sorry <laughs> yeah I gotta go to the show um I'm glad I did though because yeah. you know that stuff smooths over and Trey doesn't sit in with goose all the time but, um, <laughs> right you know but yeah. yeah no I think they're great they're you know they're so dancey and I love to dance so you know they you can really lock into that like hypnotic groove they have and I love like sexy funky groovy stuff so like goose yeah. is like definitely in my lane and and also i just think they're um great musicians and they also know how to like interact with their crowd a lot you know they've got peter the keyboard player who's just like feeling the crowd and vibing and i think i think, I think he's my great. favorite 
Yeah, he's so fun. You watch them because I've watched a couple of their shows on YouTube uh, just to like, get the whole mm-hmm. experience. You know, it's a little bit different than just like pulling up Spotify and listening, like getting to see the crowd yeah. and them and how they're interacting. And you can definitely make that parallel to where Fish was at that point in their career because where Goose is now, you could say that's like a what? 92 93 fish like yeah, age wise mm-hmm. you know and yeah. i'm just watching you and i don't have their names memorized yet but you said peter the keyboard player yeah like you can just tell he's having so much fun like yeah you can tell that he's just like i'm really getting to do this right now and he's just like smiling <laughs> and like taking pictures of the crowd and stuff i'm like this feels this feels good and it feels pure and yeah, innocent yeah. kind of and like these dudes are just like happy to 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 be doing what they're doing, you know? Um, yeah, they're, they're awesome. They're so great. And I think it's been really fun kind of seeing them kind of explode, you know, and, yeah. and become kind of like this bigger thing. And, but I will say for the record, there's no torch being passed. Because Trey <laughs> is not ready to give up that torch. Trey is yeah. still uh, the best and untouchable in my opinion. And like not on the level that, that anyone else is even, maybe yeah. going to ever get to. So I will say that. But I think that Trey is like, because he's so humble and, you know, lacks like this sense of like ego that I think destroys most rock and roll stars or yep. destroys most bands at least. Um, you know, that's why Fish has been able to be who they are for so long because those four guys aren't competing to be the number one guy in the band. Right. You know, the all the, you know, if they all weren't good friends and weren't, humble and committed to the music as opposed to like being a celebrity or being a rock star. Like we would have lost this band so long ago. Yeah. Or it just would be not what it is today where they're still evolving. And I'll double down on what you said. There is no torch being passed. There (laughs) is, (laughs) there is one, there's one goat and one goat only. And as long as he has breath in his lungs and is able to pick up a guitar He's there. Yeah. The torch is his <laughs> as yeah. long as he is on planet earth. Fully um, agree. Yeah. Um, so we've talked a little bit about um, 94, 95 early fish touched a little on, um, you know, 4.0 and what they're doing now from all of these times. It doesn't even, it can be before you started seeing them of all these years and all these eras. Do you have a favorite year of fish that you like keep going back to where you're like, and uh, what am I going to listen to? Uh, 94, 95, 97. What's that year for you? Oh, yeah. It's 97. 97. No <laughs> doubt. Yeah. No competition. Not yeah. even. No, no. It's not even. I think I I saw the most fish, like the most live fish in 96. And, you know, 94 is a special year because it was my first year. And 95 mm-hmm. was an exciting year of fish um, and incredible music. And I saw some awesome shows. But I think that the 97 shows that I saw, I saw three in the summer. I saw um, July 21st, July 22nd, and July 23rd. So that like Southeast run where they did like Virginia Beach, Raleigh, and Atlanta. Oh, Raleigh. Those shows. Oh, my God. Those shows. That 21st in Virginia Beach is like mind-blowing. Trey's like introducing all these songs. They've just come back from Europe. They've, you know, they're introducing like all this cow funk to America. They're yes. so excited. They come out with this authority, you know, the way they're playing ghost that summer, like that Lakewood amphitheater ghost from July 23rd is like, it is totally just dis- a distillation of like all that 97 summer fish is. It's like the funky. Are here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just like funky. It's sexy. It's like so in the pocket. It sounds effortless. Like they're just really authoritative in a way that I find amazing. And I am someone who loves funk, like funk music, everything. I love to dance. I love funky fish. So like that 97 and obviously fall 97 is, you know, the destroy the tour that destroyed America. Like everybody <laughs> knows it's amazing. But yeah. summer 97 is super, super hot too. It's super hot. And they're so fun and playful and incredibly inspired. And then I saw the New Year's run on 97. So 12, 30, 97, just probably the best show I'll ever see live. And, (laughs) you know, it was just a monster. And I feel like those shows, like they just, 
I don't know. Those are the shows that I listen to the most for sure. 97. Yeah. I've mm-hmm. spent a lot of time with 97, just like I'm sure every fish <laughs> fan has. Yeah. Um, it's uh, and I'm always, it always kind of gives me like a basis with that question to see, I don't know, my brain works weird. Cause I just, I kind of can't help but classify what in my head, what type of fish fan people are. And oh, that I love question, that. Tell me more. Yeah. So that question, and I hope I don't lose like this train of thought because, <laughs> because it's a, <laughs> it's hard to describe. Um, and I'm not talking like, oh, there's the Chad or the Wook or the, right. you know, Trustafarian. That's not what I mean. I mean, <laughs> like music wise, what kind of fish mm-hmm. fan are you? And Hearing 97, I'm like, okay. And you've talked about that. You're like, I love to dance. You know, yeah. I love the group. I love funk. And so that kind of like in my head, I'm like, okay, sh- she's this type of fish fan. And if I hear someone yeah. say 94 is my favorite year, I can't get enough of 94. I'm like, oh, dude, you're like, what's a good comparison? I'm like, okay, you're like, a, you're like a metal head fish fan. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes any sense. I'm like, you yeah. like hearing like a million notes per minute. Um, yeah. 95, I guess, would be like, you know, don't want to mess around with any bullshit. Just take me to the best and yeah. let me live there. And get weird. It get weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those things where I'm kind of like, when I ask these questions, I'm like, okay, you're this kind of fish fan. Okay, you're this kind yeah. of fish fan. You're this kind of fish fan. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Or not really fish fan, just uh, I guess that would be like music fan. What type of yeah. music Yeah, do you like? So that's cool. Yeah, 97 is like, it's... It's hard to beat, but I can say that. It's so weird because I can say that about any year. If you were to sit here and say 94, I'd be like, yeah, that's hard to beat. (laughs) Unless you were to be like, 2009 was really my favorite year. I'd be like, okay, next question. (laughs) (laughs) What are you doing on this podcast? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, no, I know. I think that there's some really iconic years that you can all make an argument for are the best years of fish for sure. And yeah. it's all subjective. And 97 is one of them. Yeah, 100%. it's all subjective, but 97 is obviously the best. I mean, <laughs> I think like, you know, the argument against 97 would just be like that their jams maybe are repetitive because they're really funky and like, you know, chill, like more like jazzy yeah. and funky. But um, that's how I like my fish. So Yeah, that's a good point because with a lot of 97, you just take the jams, right? Go to fish, yeah. just jams.com. And pull up all the jams. You could click on the 12 minute mark of pretty much (laughs) any ghost, and it's going to be the six. You're going to be hearing the same thing. Uh, Yeah, it's going to be good. (laughs) It's a nice little groove, though. Like, I miss that. Yeah, I know. Um, Okay. Hardest question of all time. Okay. The one you were struggling with. I was. (laughs) Do you have a favorite jam of all time? Desert I Island, do. you can only take one, and that's the only fish you can listen to for the rest of your life. What is it? I definitely do. And I'm just going to say as a disclaimer. <laughs> I love the disclaimers. <laughs> as a 1.0 girl, this uh-huh. is hard. This is hard to admit. This okay. is hard to admit. You know, it's from 3.0. I'm just going to say that. It okay. is 12, 30, 19, the tweezer. Because 12, 30, 19. That tweezer to me is a masterpiece. It's just a journey. It's some of the most gorgeous music I've ever heard Fish play. It is, I was there. It was my first time on the floor at MSG. And I've been at MSG for Fish so many times, but I've never been on the floor until that night. And at least that I can remember. I'm going to say, <laughs> I feel like <laughs> someone <laughs> that I saw shows with at 1.0 might be like, what the hell are you talking what about? You we were t- there, 12, 29, 97. So that I remember, that sure. is the, the first time. And it was like, I'm short. So when I'm on the floor at MSG, like, I don't see anything. <laughs> like, I just see dudes' shoulders, you right. know? It's like, but I'm like in the soup of the lights and the soup. you know it's I like love that. I'm in the soup, right? <laughs> you're like in it. Like you're not watching this the soup like boil like you are when you're like above. You're actually like in it. And yeah. you're just like you kind of just like give in to like see, you know, you don't have that urge to like, should I watch the band? Should I watch the lights? Like, no, you're just dancing and you're just immersed in this like experience. You're part of it. And you're part of it. Yeah. So 
that's where I was. And my friend and I were like, when Tweezer came on, you know, they opened the second set with this Tweezer and it's like, listen back to that Tweezer if you haven't in a while, because they come out just like guns slinging. Like it is just like, they're hitting it so hard from the get go, just like really, really hitting it. It sounds so tight. And they're like, you know, in those like spaces in between like the, the, the notes, they're just like giving it this like little funk stuff. I mean, it is, it is hot. And then it goes into this just, I don't even know how to describe it. Like it is so beautiful and timeless and ethereal. And there was just all the blue and white lights. And we were in this moment and like, I turned to my friend and I'm like, what is happening right now? Like it felt like celestial. Like it was just on another level. It was so magical. And everyone around was, was doing that same thing. Like people kept turning and looking at each other. Like, are we really hearing this? You know, like it is so stunning and beautiful and it comes like full circle and takes you back around. And I just feel like that's the jam that I, I listen to the most because of that experience. And also maybe because it's the most current, you know, that I've been. And my yeah. favorite jams are usually jams that I've been in the shows for. Sure. Just because like, you know, you want to remember like the experience, you know, right. not just the music. I have a couple of jams that I listen to that I haven't been at the show that I listen to a fair amount, but that is like the one that I'm like, I want to go somewhere, like take me away. It takes you back to that yeah. being in the soup. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. awesome. And hearing you describe that, we've all had, I mean, assuming that you're listening to this podcast and you've seen fish and you have experienced <laughs> yeah. it, we've all experienced that moment or moments that like you're describing to where you're like, is this really happening right now? You know, is th like it, everything's perfect. Everything is absolutely perfect. And you're just in it. You have surrendered to the flow, right? Yes. Do you have any of those instances where you're in that moment and then you go back and listen to it and you're like, oh, that really, that really wasn't that great because that's happened to me a few <laughs> times. <laughs> I don't know if that's um, the influence of party favors in the moment, making this yeah. seem like great. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, people are probably at home being like, oh my God, this is the best <laughs> jam ever. And then I go back and listen to it the next day and I'm like, Oh, and it's like seven minutes long. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Oh, you're like, whoa. Was this the right jam? <laughs> Has that ever happened yeah. to you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have like major attendance bias. Like I, whenever I'm at a fish show, it's probably the best fish show I've ever been at, you know? Tweeting like, all the time, yeah, texting everyone. Like, <laughs> I'm so happy. Like I'm just always like, so in the moment, I'm like, I'm not like a tweeter or a texter during a show. I'm just like, sure. I only take my phone out to like, potentially take a picture just so I can like remember maybe I'm like oh film a little video and then I'm like no Trey doesn't like phones like put it away you know yeah. and so I'm always just trying to be like be be there in the so, moment yeah so I'm not someone who's like very analytic during shows like I'm just I'm just letting it all come in like when we do recaps for the pod the next day I have to listen to the show the next morning because I'm like I don't even know what happened like you know like I'm just there I you you could tell when a show is like epic, I think, but like, I remember yeah. I was at 12, 30, 18 at the garden. And, um, I remember after the first set, I was like, you know, I don't know if it's what we took, but this show is like so good. Right. <laughs> and I think it turned out it was a really good show, but I, <laughs> but I was like, I wasn't sure, you know, I was like, reconfirm mm -hmm. the next day. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm going to like find out and like talk to people about it. But yeah, I, it's, it's true. I feel like when you're at a show, like it's the best. Yeah. It is yeah. the attendance bias and shout out to Brian. Have you been oh, on attendance bias Brian. yet? Yes. Yes. I love Brian. He, We've also become really good friends too. He is the nicest guy. He's the, he's the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was one of the first people to reach out to me. It was like, Hey, welcome to the, basically like the fish podcast space. Like let's oh. do some shows together. And talking about earlier, you know, like finding like the different lanes of like fish podcasts, like what a beautiful and perfect lane attendance, but like everything down yes. to even the name, like shout out to Brian. So if good. you haven't checked out attendance bias yet, check out that podcast because it's pretty good. <laughs> it's so good. And it's Brian, really is, good. he prepares, he's a teacher like me. So he's like fully prepared. He knows yeah. everything. I actually talked about, uh, seven twenty one ninety seven on his show and there you it, go. He, yeah, he's just, he's such a good guy. Yeah. He is out. very prepared. It was so funny because, um, like whenever I did his show, it was like, here's like the itinerary, 
Like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, I give you like the thing like this I means stop talking. I edit, you know, I was like, okay. And like going with the flow. And then when he came on, like kind of like when I was talking with you before, I was like, yeah, it's super free flowing. We'll just talk. If you need me to edit anything <laughs> yeah. out, just let me know. And here we go. <laughs> it's like so opposite, but it, they're both so good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love Shout it. Out to Brian. It's um, awesome. On the flip side, I always like to ask the, these feel, I'll just let the question speak for itself. Okay. What fish song would you be okay with never hearing again? Okay. I'm going to say I have two. <laughs> um, I have more than two, so go ahead. Okay, <laughs> it's <good>. okay. <laughs> yeah, two is just like me being generous. Yeah. Um, people are going to hate me, but I really don't like Roger. Roger. Whatever. You like Roger? Roger? I don't. Roger, Roger, GIF, Roger, GIF. Roger, <laughs> right. Who knows? Um, <laughs> even the name's annoying. No, I don't know. You know? <laughs> Like I just, I it, the lyrics are really corny, and um, I think the music gets better. Jonathan Hart from HF Pod, who is has some of the best fish opinions of anybody I know, he's trying to tell me that the music and that if you listen is so good in that song. When you listen to Mike, it like takes you away. I've got to focus on that. I just I don't know. I can't get over That's that line. Right. The circus is the place for me. Like. With bells and heart, like I, I'm just like, mm -mm. <laughs> I'm out. It's like my bathroom song. I'm like, yeah. but the problem is everybody's going to the bathroom during that, so I'm just <laughs> like, this is not a good song. <laughs> and Roke, that's interesting. Um, that's not an answer that I've gotten before, and I guess it would make sense because that's a very like that. Oh, I want to watch myself here. <laughs> yeah, that's a very like <laughs> I've never analyzed that song before. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I've never been like, ugh, rogue, but I've also never been like, rogue, rogue, yeah. player. So yeah. it's like a very like middle, it's a very mid yeah. <laughs> fish song, I guess, yeah. would be a good way to put it. Um, but then there are people that are really into it. Like they have those like Islander shirts that say like rogue across the front. Like, really? That look, like, never yeah. Like, yeah. And it's like, you see these like big dudes wearing them and you're like wow you like that song huh have we ever gotten anything out of a rogue i've never thought about this song i don't even think it become it's never been a jammed out i don't think i mean it actually kind of could be cool if it jammed out but i don't yeah. know i i don't think i've ever mm, mm -mm. ran across like a jammed or like type two rogue it's interesting you know, trey or mike or someone's gonna hear this and then next yeah. time they take the stage we're gonna get a 37 minute rogue <laughs> I'm gonna have to like eat shit. Everybody's gonna be like <laughs> tweeting at me, like, yeah, there you See, go. Megan, you suck. It's good. <laughs> it's good. Now, what was the other one? Um, Son of a Mule. Just, oh, really? Yeah, like, just I don't know. I really, I love a lot of their bluegrass. Like, I really do. Yeah. Like, you know, like Uncle Pen, Nelly Kane, like, yeah. you are. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I love all that stuff. But, um, and I mean, you know, I started seeing them in '94, so I was seeing like a lot of that. sets of bluegrass, and I yeah. loved it. Um, but that song is just weird and it just like gets like, it's so fast. Like, I don't know. I can't really dance. I'm just like, I don't know. This is just like a lot. And then I don't really love the like dual kind of thing. Yeah. It's like, dun, I don't know. Dun, dun, yeah. It's just like, dun, dun, uh, it's kind of cheesy. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I don't love it. <laughs> you know, um, if I wasn't so into bluegrass, I can see, I can see why you don't like it. But I love anything that has a hint of bluegrass that fish does. I'm like, let's go. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm originally from <laughs> Oklahoma, you know, so growing up in that area. Oh, it's not nice. a lot of bluegrass there. I don't want to put that like misconception out there. But, you know, growing up listening to different types of things like country and bluegrass. Mm -hmm. And there's just like a place in me, especially this time of year when it starts cooling down and like fall. Yeah. I'm like, give me some whiskey, get my boots and. Put on some bluegrass. <laughs> Let's go. I love it. So are you super into Billy Strings? Oh, yeah. 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 I'm going to see him. He's coming to, which is crazy, because I feel like Billy Strings is, he's at a different level than the venue he's coming to here. Yeah. Uh, so in That's Michigan, fun. you're from Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in like the Bay City Saginaw area, like right oh here. Oh, my God. You're not far from where I grew up. Really? Where'd you grow up? Yeah. Outside of Grand Rapids. Yeah. Grand Rapids. So yeah. not- Oh, yeah, you said that. I didn't know if you yeah, were from so Grand, Grand Rapids. Rapids. It, yeah. Yeah, right? Like Grand Rapids. Yeah, right over there. there. Right? Yeah. yeah. I think it's like, I don't know how far away it would be. 
Not far though. It's but probably yeah. like an hour, 45 minutes, yeah. right? Like yeah, not far. Not yeah. far at all. Um, but Billy Strings is coming to Saginaw next month. Wow. And it's like, I'm like, why? Are, like, you need to be in Detroit. Like, what are you yeah, yeah, <laughs> what are you planning yeah. Saginaw for? But it, Saginaw's like 10 minutes from my house. So I'm like, let's go. Got the tickets. I'm stoked. I've never seen them before, but I've listened to the shit out of Billy String, so it's oh, gonna be that's fun. So awesome. I'm yeah. happy. I mean, he probably booked that tour like a year ago or something. Right? Sure, like, yeah. So much has changed for him. I've never seen him. Um, and haven't really listened to him, but God, people love him. He is yeah. big. Yeah, he's yeah. and like his story, um, because he's a Michigan dude too. Um oh, he's from a that. small town in Michigan. And I guess he like had some issues like with, you know, I guess the town he's from here is like pretty like a pretty druggy place. Mm. So he's had like issues with like family and friends and like wasn't set up to succeed and be what he yeah. is. So he kind of like wow made his way through the mire. So he's he's next level. I'm super excited about seeing him. Yeah, that's awesome. I saw not to get too deep into Billy Strings, but I was uh I follow him on Instagram and he posted he's always like smoking joints and stuff. And he yeah. posted this video <laughs> the other day and he was like Man, I just got to say, and he's like smoking a joint. He's like, I can't be signing shit for y'all no more, man. He's like, it's getting crazy. <laughs> he's like, I can't even go to the airport. He's like, there's people just flood me. He's like, you're signing stuff. He's like, and then you're putting it on eBay. And he's like, you're ruining it for the rest of the fans. He's like, so I just, I can't be signing shit no more. <laughs> I, like, I don't blame you, man. <laughs> yeah. But it was, fair. it was just kind of comical because it was like, it had the tone of like being something so serious of like, yeah. yo, we as a country got to do better about this. But it was like, yo, y'all are Not stressing me out with shit. signing all this shit. So you can like hawk it on eBay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It felt so serious, but I was like, oh, that's it. Okay, yeah. No, you don't have to okay. sign anything. Yeah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. In your family, are, are you the only person in your family that's like into fish or are other people – into fish as well are you the lone ranger i'm the lone ranger you know like my husband's been to like a handful of fish shows because like unwittingly come with me and like you know i went through this period where it's funny like i was super super into fish in 1.0 and then you know they took their hiatus and then they and at that point i was like you know early 20s like trying to become like an adult you know and i was like i gotta like move past my like you know I'm Kippy, still trying like, to become an adult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're a lot younger than me. You've got plenty of time. Um, I'm trying to not become an adult anymore. So I'm trying to like, an- like not adult. Like I'm like yeah. the opposite. I'm like I'm, working on like ending my adulting. Yeah. I don't even know if I've made it to being an adult yet, but I feel like at some point I'm going to turn around and I'm just going to stop too. <laughs> exactly. Like just like work back. Yeah. But yeah. So like, I don't know. I just went through this period where I was like, I got to stop like being in a jam bands. I got to stop like, you know, I just thought it was kind of like, immature in a way and I kind of shunned it you know I would like secretly listen to fish and like the dead and like you know kind of like just like you know kind of be into it and I also thought like when I met my husband and he was like a seer like a like a real adult like with like a real job and not like some like you know (laughs) drug dealing like you know (laughs) guy I would have been dating in college (laughs) um I was like oh my god like this guy is serious like I gotta like be serious gotta clean up my act yeah i gotta clean up my act it turns out he like loves my like weird you know jam band hippie stuff he's super supportive of it but like i went through this time where i wasn't seeing shows i wasn't you know i when they came back in 2009 i would see i had a baby at that point i was pregnant with my second so i'd see like a show a year you know just kind of like when i could Um, and so i didn't really have like my crew back together anymore you know like we were all over the country we're in different places and i didn't have like my like college crew or my high school crew that I like went to see shows with so right. I was kind of like dragging people that weren't really into it you know I was like hey like you come, know come let's go the show. yeah I think like I dragged my husband to like the 2016 New Year's Eve Petricor and he's like what the fuck you know like it was like <laughs> hours hours of fish like hours of fish like yeah. instrumental you know there was like Petricor, time turns a last like so many just like like just asking a lot you know yeah. I was like, you're like i'm nah, sorry really yeah i know it was like that's the last show he's been to um you know he but he was super always been super supportive but then like what happened was the baker's dozen i just got like completely re-inspired like i was like this band is doing this crazy thing in my in my city 
I live in New York. I live in Brooklyn. And so I was like, oh, wow. I'm going to like a bunch. And I'm just like, I was so re-energized. And that's when I started like listening as much as I could. Like, and then I started like finding girlfriends that were like, oh, like coming out of the woodwork, like, oh, I haven't seen fish in 20 years, but like, I love them. You know, like <laughs> I'm a 1.02. Like I used yeah. to go see them, you know? And so it was like, we all just started to like find each other. And so now I go to shows with these like girl gangs, you know, and we just like rage and we get, you know, hotels and we stay alone without our families. And we just like, you know, it's so fun. It's like become this like female empowerment thing that we do, you know? Sure. We, like, yeah. It's so fun. We like fly over and see shows together. And like, it's just been, and I've gotten so into the, into the community now because of like the podcast obviously has been just like so amazing for me to like have a place and a reason to like meet people and everyone's been right. so awesome and supportive. And I'm sure you've experienced this, like starting a podcast and talking to people. And, um, you know, I've gotten to jump onto this podcast that's been around for nine years and, um, just having that place and visibility has been like amazing, just getting to know people and having people come up to meet shows and like reaching out to people online and like, you know, I've entered the Twitter universe and like, just like seeing. <laughs> Gotta be careful they, in there. <laughs> I know. I, oh, I have like the most curated Twitter. It's like 10 people. They're all like super nice fish world. So I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like so sweet. But yeah. you know, it's just been amazing. I've made like so many friendships through this band now that um, it's so funny that like, I think about this thing that I was kind of embarrassed about, you know, and, <laughs> and now I'm like, I fully embrace and like, I'm a teacher and my students you know, I play fish for them. They know I'm into fish. Like I, That's you know, cool. I fully, yeah. Like it's like, it's who I am. And I'm always having like parents come up to me at like drop off or pick up and be like, I heard that you're into fish, you know? And I'm, they, and they're always like, I have a brother, you know, everybody's got like somebody <laughs> in their life, you know, like <laughs> yeah. my cousin is super into fish. You know, it's always like a dude, right? It's <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. Cause I hear that same thing. Cause I have like the yeah. fish sticker on the back of my car. Um, I've got like the lightning bolt on my finger. Yes. Um, and like, if I'm ever wearing like a dead shirt or a fish shirt, you're so right. It's always someone that's coming up to you being like, you into fish? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Are you? And they're like, no, not me, but like my brother, it's always <laughs> a cousin, a brother, a somebody, you know, my father-in-law, this father, it's, but it's never exactly. the person. They're not like, I it's love never fish that. too. <laughs> I know. So it's weird. so funny. It's yeah. so weird. But yeah, but I have to say though, my dad has recently become, so my dad is like a former hippie. Like he, I mean, that's not like a the way you would describe him. My dad's like super, was super buttoned up and was like successful, but like he was like, went to Woodstock, you know, he loves music. He like always played, like they were really into classic rock. So I was grow, growing up on like a lot of like Led Zeppelin and Food Mac and Emerson Lake and, like, and yeah. Palmer and yeah, like Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young and yeah, like so I was listening to that stuff and you know they've always loved music. Him and my mom and recently they've become like super into Tab and they flew to Red Rocks. No to way. See Trey at Tab, yeah, to see Trey there. They have seen Goose now. I think twice. Like they're really like Your parents. Yeah. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> oh, no, my parents are cool. They yeah. want to come. See fish like I think it was I went to see oh I went to see the Raleigh show this summer and they live in Wilmington North Carolina and they were like oh well uh, you're going to Raleigh like we could like come up and I was like no <laughs> no Don't want to see a show with your parents I I have so I saw a show with them the Raleigh show um July 22nd 1997 I brought them oh, no. and that was that crazy rain show where like sure. there was a huge thunderstorm and they band played taste and it was like they were like playing with the thunder and my poor parents sat up on the lawn under like ponchos through the whole show. I got stubbed down with my <laughs> friends <laughs> and, <I have> to... <laughs> oh, and wow. like was in the pavilion like partying. You know, I was like mom and dad, I, 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 you know, I got stubbed down. All my friends on tour were staying at their house that night. You know, like they lived in Cary, North Carolina, right near the Raleigh. And it was just like jerks, jerks. That's and they so still funny, were like though. so nice and like waited. Up. So they want to come to a show with me again. And, you know, I'll do it. But I'm like, you know, I was going down to see a bunch of friends. Like I was yeah. hanging up with a bunch of the age of pod guys. Like I was like, well, I don't know, you know, like I yeah. got my hands full, but yeah, they're yeah. awesome. So my parents, you know, talk about like unadulting. They're like teenagers. They're like 
you know, <laughs> senior teenagers. <laughs> I love, you said a lot of terms that I've never heard before, and I love them. I'm teaching they're, you all kinds of yeah, things, I know. right? <laughs> so they're funny. like fully – they just party all the time. It's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I would like to do a show with either – either or because my parents are split. Um, I would like to do a show with both of them or either one of them, but I would want it to your point. I would want it to be a show that – they're the only people that I know there. Like, I don't want to meet up. I like yes. have a bunch of my friends coming because then I feel like I'm going to be like torn and like, oh, I got to go over here and see them and just like leaving, like abandoning them at the show, you know, like, <laughs> like, like, what, like I what you were, yeah, what you were <laughs> describing. I feel like that would give me anxiety, but I want to yeah. see a show with them because they obviously both know that I'm like yeah. super into the band. And like my mom, she's cute. Like, there'll be like times where, um, they'll be doing like, you know how they stream the, um, like the first song of the set oh, yeah. now, like on Facebook and stuff. Um, it'll pop because my mom follows the band and stuff That's now so and sweet. she'll, and she'll like tag me in it and she'll be like, do you see this? I'm like, yeah, I'm watching it. I'm like, yep, that's cool. I know and about then, this. Thanks. Yeah. And she'll <laughs> like, if I'm at a show, she'll like ask me like how the set is and things like that. So that she- That is so cool. I know. She- she doesn't like sit down and like listen to fish and like seek them out, but she knows that I'm so into them yeah. that she just by default like is into them as well. You so got to bring her. I know. I want totally to. Love <laughs> yeah. to see you in your element. You yeah, know? exactly. That's what she would, <laughs> that's what she would probably be doing the whole time. Just watching me. Exactly. <laughs> I'd be all self-conscious instead of like getting down. I'd be like, it's a good one. <laughs> hey mom, this is good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but I asked you originally if if you were the loner in your family, yeah. fish wise, to to lead into this question because I'm sure that you've had to do this. What song or show or jam would you play for someone or have you played for someone that's not into fish that you're trying to introduce them to the band? This is really hard to do. <laughs> Don't you and think? It, like I feel no, like it when is. you're so into something, you can't see what's good about it from the outside in a way that is like subjective or objective enough to be like, this would sound good to someone who's normal. You know, like I'm trying. <laughs> Normies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I'm like, what do you play to a noob? Like, I don't know. I've had 30 years or whatever to like build relationships with these songs. And so like whenever I'm trying to think like, okay, like someone reached out to me, like a mom that I knew from school and she was like, you know, a farmhouse keeps like popping up on my like Alexa or something. And she's like, you know, it's really good. Like, I think I like fish. And I'm like, she's like, what should I listen to? And I'm like, hold on. Okay. Like, you know, like, okay, deep breaths. Like that is so much responsibility. And like, it's so like stressful. Like, I, I don't know. Like I remember after I went down to quarantine, after quarantine, like during like that summer after quarantine, like 2020, Mm-hmm. I drove down to – like, my friend had rented a beach house and was like, come down and, like, you know, we'll just stay here at the house and, like, we won't do anything, whatever. And I had just – the last time I'd seen fish was that 12, 30, 19, and I was just so – like, that whole show was so awesome. And and my friend that we went to stay with, he's a deadhead, and he was like, you know, fish. Like, of course, I've heard of them. I, you know, like, I know about them. Like, what should I listen to? And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I just saw this show, like, this tweezer. And I put it on and it was like, it's like introducing someone, you know, it's like someone's like, I don't know. I don't even know how you explain it. It's like someone's like, I think I want to try mushrooms. And you're like, okay, here's like a half, <laughs> here's like a half an ounce, you know, eat it. You know, it's like, they're not, it's just too much. Like it's like yeah. too much, you know? So I, it's very challenging for me. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll play covers they play Mm -hmm. like hey listen to them play this like ballad of curtis low or listen to them play shine a light or here's them playing like a ween song you know something Mm -hmm. that's like a little bit more like accessible to hear like them or i'll play them like a 97 funk you know like a wolfman's brother or like a Mm -hmm. moma dance you know or something moma's later but you know like something that's like i don't know has something to like grab onto a little more easy listening yeah, yeah, like songy, you know, like, yeah. you know, I don't know. But then it's like, you know, you could play them like sample in a jar or like other things. But then it's kind of like not really what, you know. You're misrepresent- should- you feel like you're yeah. misrepresenting the band. Yeah. And it it really does depend on because the 
29 times that I've asked this question on here. Um, uh, people have made a good point of it depends on who the person is. So like getting a grasp of like, what do they listen to already? Are they listening to yeah. classic rock? Cause that's going to be an easier transition. Or are they listening to like top 40, they like Harry Styles, they like Lizzo. That's going to yeah. be more challenging, you know? So it really depends on like the person's taste. If they're into country or bluegrass, like you obviously take that lane within fish, you know? Um, so it is hard. Um, and on the last episode, Taylor brought up a good point. Um, the album Alive one is mm -hmm. a pretty good like representation of the band, at least in yeah. that time. Um, and pretty easy listening. You know, there's nothing like extremely crazy or in there out there, you know, enough to where. So like I feel like that if you were to just like recommend that and throw that on, that was probably like one of the best answers that I'd heard that I hadn't thought of where I was like, oh, I was like, that makes sense. But it is a very hard question because it's like, oh, who am I dealing with here? You know, like, yeah. like what are you and into? Like, how do you say if someone's like, why do you love this band? Like, play me them. It's like, oh, I, you know, like, <laughs> you don't I want love me to do that. <laughs> So many reasons. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, and then I, I often get into a situation where I'm like, okay, well, I'll play you this, you know, this blaze on from the show because it goes into this epic jam. But then you're like, you have to really sit and like listen to it. And if they're talking or hanging out, you're like, wait, hey, okay, you're not listening to this. Let me, let me try this, the, the, you know? This part coming up, this part coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's just, you become like annoying. I don't know. It's <laughs> tough. The live one's good though, because I think that actually was what got a lot of people into fish. Yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah, it's a very, like, you know, like bands have like greatest hits albums, you mm -hmm. know, like that's, that would be the closest thing that I could think of that would be like yeah. a fish greatest hits, you know, or greatest. Yeah, it's because it's not too crazy. It's not too bleh. It's just. Fish. Yeah. Yeah. Good fish. Um, yeah, good fish. <laughs> um, what song? Uh, well, first off, how many shows have you seen? I have seen. I don't know my exact number. I'm probably like up like around 60. Not that many. Gotcha. Yeah. And isn't, yeah. That, isn't that funny? Like hearing what you just said, because I'm around, I'm almost to 60. So we're mm -hmm. like in that same yeah. ballpark. But isn't that funny? Like whenever we say that, if you say that to a normie, I guess. Oh, yeah. They you're think like, oh, I've crazy. seen my favorite band, you know, almost 60 times. They're like, yeah, excuse me. But in this. I know. In this community, it's like you say, you drop the number 60 and it's like, oh, noob. <laughs> you no, know, you talk to some people like, that are don't like. don't publicize it. Like I'm telling you because I like you, Clay, but like I don't publicize it because I'm like people are going to be like, that girl doesn't have a right to talk about fish because I've seen them 300 times. Like it's true. Like I, it's it's unbelievable. But, you know, I've had other priorities in my life. I don't yeah. have an, you know, my my wallet can't, you know, sustain seeing them 100 right. times a year. But like it's definitely like. I'm a little embarrassed about it. I'm always like, mm, I'm not going to tell you, you because be. it's like, I know, you no, and, and you, you don't have to see them all the time to follow them and yeah. love them. And, you know, I think that that's like a misconception. And, yeah. you know, I think one thing that I've learned throughout all my years of loving fish is that like, it's a good exercise in like, I have extreme FOMO and like the band is definitely like constantly giving me FOMO. And yeah. I just realized like, I'm not going to see all the shows and that's mm -hmm. okay. You know, yeah. I get to talk about them with people and I get, you know, and I get to like, Thank goodness for live streaming, you know, and so yeah. it's okay. Yeah, it's close enough. <laughs> and isn't it weird how that feels like just because there's so much like weight, like yeah. not even like real weight, but like yeah. there's so much weight on that question. It feels like mm -hmm. almost like an intimate question. It's like, yeah. how, many, how many shows have you seen? <laughs> you know, it's like, like, okay, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> asking someone's no, age or like how many people yeah. they've <laughs> been with. It's like, it's, it feels so <laughs> weird. I'd rather admit it? that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I asked that to to see, like, do you have out of those 60 shows, we'll round up, what song have you been chasing? Or have you been chasing mm -hmm. a song and got it at a certain show and you're like, boom, I'm good. Is there still that white whale out there for you? Yeah, Iculus. Iculus. I mean, yeah. yeah, like, I just, I really want to see Iculus. I've never seen it. And you know, yeah, I've only seen so many shows, but I, I have been pretty, you know, deep with fish for large periods of my life. And I just want to, I want to hear the story. I want to, 
I want to go to the place, you know, I want to like, yeah. Yeah. I just, I want to, I want to have Trey take me away, you know, I want to yeah. go to Gamehenge, you know? Yeah. <laughs> want to go yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So Chasing Iculus, mm -hmm. um, what song would you want to see Fish cover? This is so hard. I was thinking about this because I would love Fish to like tap back into some 97-ness. And so, <clears throat> and as I mentioned, I really, really love uh, funk. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, I don't know if you know Herbie Hancock. You don't know if I know Herbie Hancock. <laughs> Come on. Yes, I know Herbie but Hancock. I love Herbie Hancock. And I feel like if they covered like part of Chameleon or something like that, that was just like really funky. Like I would love to hear them play that and then like go off into this like epic funk jam. Like that would be so Goosebumps sick, are back. Right? <laughs> it like, would, yeah. Herbie and Fish, like this is like a beautiful, a beautiful re like. And I can't believe that hasn't happened already. I know. Like How hearing you, you say that, mm -hmm. it feels very like, why haven't you done this yet? Duh. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. And if you hadn't have brought up the point that they haven't, if someone were to come up to me and be like, yo, did you hear that cover from and drop a random date of, yeah. uh, you know, Chameleon? I'd be like, no, but play it for me. You exactly. know, I wouldn't be like, oh, they yeah. haven't covered that because it feels so like on par, you know? Exactly. <laughs> I know. I was like thinking about that. We did like um, HF Pod did like a trivia thing with Wook Plus, and oh, my cool. trivia question was like, "What have they not covered?" And it was like four songs, and I was like, oh. "Well, this is impossible because like you know, there's like some weird random cover that I'm not gonna remember." Do and, like, you remember what they were? It, what? No, I know that. No? I got it wrong. I think I said they hadn't covered a Kiss song, and they had. I think that's what it was. Gotcha. Um. I don't remember. I have to look. I can look again. It's like on YouTube, but yeah. I was so pissed about it because I knew it was between two of the songs. Uh -huh. And one of the songs, um, I was up against Travis from Wook Plus. And he, since I got it wrong, it went to him. And he said this, um, I think it was the song uh, um, that, what is it? It was... Uh, they played it. I, I was there. It was 96, like the New Year's Eve run. Um, Tom Marshall came out and sang it. It was like one of these um, British band. I don't remember. They, it's like the sounds of hell. Oh, Wonderwall. That's like, oh. it was like, you know, like. Did they that, do Wonderwall? Yeah. yeah. Or one of those songs by that band. What's that band yeah. called? Oasis. Oasis. Yeah. They played yeah. an Oasis song. Yeah. And I, it was Wonderwall, I think. And they came out and they're like, it's in Harpua. And Trey's like. Oh, These are the evil sounds of hell. And Tom Marshall comes out and was like, how many people change? And it's like, <laughs> it's so funny. And that's that was funny. the other one of the other picks. And Travis picked that. And I was like, that's wrong because I was there. I know that. But I, <laughs> you know, we both got it wrong. So you feel yeah. like, it, I, but it was, I felt so bad. I was the only person to get one wrong. But like, of course, I'm with like Brian Brinkman, who has like a genius level memory for fish and Jonathan Hart, who knows everything too. And me, like, of course I'm going to get the one wrong. It was just, I let my team down, but we won anyway, but still it was, it was hard, but and isn't yeah. It, isn't it weird? Yeah. Like where, cause we're all so passionate about this band, like just thinking about doing fish trivia with other fish fans gives me so much anxiety because so much. I'm like, I, I know how much I love this band and I know, I guess in my own head, like what level of fan that I am yeah, <laughs> but if yeah, I were to yeah. like get something wrong which I've done uh. a lot in the 29 episodes of this podcast people have texted <laughs> me my friends have been like dude what were you talking about that wasn't that show and I'm like yeah. I don't know man <laughs> I don't know Listen, but like we can't be perfect I know doing trivia that gives me so much anxiety because it's like oh my god if you get asked a an easy question that you don't know yeah. the answer to I would just be like uh, and just close my browser. <laughs> just no. oh, connection I was issues. So <laughs> nervous for this. Now it's Wook Plus. You know it's going to be chill and fun. But it was like uh -huh. nine o'clock at night on like a Wednesday night this summer, and I was like, "We're doing what?" You know, I'm like, I was so stressed <laughs> out about it. It was just, it was terrifying. I mean, I knew we were going to win because I have like Brian and Jonathan on my team. They're like everything, <laughs> yeah. but I was just like still so scared. It was, it was I, I would never do fish trivia. It's yeah, no, it gives me anxiety just talking about it. Um, okay, so it starts in 94, it's still ongoing right now in 2022. Um, out of all the shows you've been on, the tours, the road trips, 
do you have any favorite memories from tour? It can be in the venue, can be on the way to the venue, in the lot. What are those memories that you're willing to share um, that just stick out to where you're like, oh my God, that one time that was so crazy? Yeah, I mean, I think definitely the show that I talked about from 95 is one of those nights that I'll never forget. It was so magical. But I think the tour that stands out the most was when I was in Europe in 96. It was <sighs> You know, it was just incredible. I don't even, it happened so magically. Like, you know, my boyfriend at the time from college, it was after our freshman year. He was like, the band's going to Europe this summer. I think he found out in like the Doniac Shabais or something, you know, and he was like, let's go. And I had never been to Europe. You know, I had only been on a plane like a few times. And so we flew to Europe, we flew to London, and we did the five headlining shows, five or six, I don't remember, there was like five or six headlining shows. There was one in London in Shepherd's Bush, there was one in um, Sesto Calente, Italy, that was incredible, I'll tell us more about that in a minute, because that's like my favorite night I've ever had fish. And then there was like one in, I think, Hamburg, Nuremberg, and then I'm forgetting where the other one was, but it was just this magical, you know, we were on trains the whole time and yeah. it was just, you know, we were writing set lists down. There was probably like 25 of us that were like Americans that were like going to every show. Oh, um, oh that you more, had just met there. Yeah. That was, was like, like, you had a crew of, like, of 25 going? Oh no, it was like, just oh my two of God. us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. No, we were like backpacking. Like we had, yeah. like, you know, we were sleeping outside. Like we were sleeping in like soccer fields and playgrounds wow. and yeah, like we didn't have money. You know, we were just like going with it and it was, it was so cool because the band you know this is 96 the band is huge at this point so you know jerry's dad everybody has like fled to to the fish scene the fish mm -hmm. scene is, is crazy now and mm -hmm. here they are able to go to europe and be play super small venues and they were Intimate, hanging out with yeah. us all the time like outside of the italy show it's like the small town outside of milan on like this little river Everybody on the train there was like stressed about tickets because nobody could figure out how to get tickets. And like, what if we get there and there's no tickets left? And like, you know, we didn't know anything. And so we finally get to this small little town. We walk straight to the venue. It's like a bar um, where there's probably like, I don't know, maybe 500 people can fit, maybe. Wow. And we walk up, we're like third in line to get tickets, you know? <laughs> And we're just sitting there like waiting for them to open up and they open up and we recognize like right away, like, okay, this, this is, this is not like going to be hard to get tickets to the show. Like this is like, just, for nothing. Like, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is like hardcore kitties and like some Italian locals, you know? And so yeah. we end up like, we get our tickets and then we're like, walk to the little town and buy like big jugs of wine. I'd never really, you know, had wine before. We were like <laughs> passing around giant jugs of wine all day and like, sitting in this playground on the river and everybody's like swimming and hanging out. And then the band comes out and they're like loading in and hanging out by the, behind the venue. And there's like these like steps next to the venue and Mike's got his like guitar and we're singing like dead songs. And so Mike's, Mike's playing, like playing, playing like acoustic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And we're just like all, we have pictures of like me sitting right next to him and like, we're all, you know, everybody was like, getting in the picture, having their friend like take a picture and then like them come swooping out, you know, like get a picture me in this with Mike, like this is crazy. Yeah. And then, you know, Fishman was always playing like chess with people. And I have wow. a picture of like Fishman and Paige hanging out. And I think Trey was getting like a massage and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> then like Mike was hanging out in the swings with this girl. It was just like a very intimate, chill thing. Like there's this yeah. guy who we were on this bridge and people were jumping off the bridge into this river and, Trey comes over and is like, um, you know, jump off the bridge to this guy. And the guy's like, you know, I'll do it. You know, if I do it, will you play a song that I want? And Trey's like, all right. And the guy picks Makasupa Policeman. Bro. <laughs> what? Get like, out of here. What? Like, really? Come really? Come on, man. Did he play like, it? Did they he play did. it? He played it. He jumped and he played it. <laughs> And it was just like, are you kidding me? But then the show was like unbelievable. It was, we were all in this like tight little bar place with like the, the back is like painted with all these like, you know, Italian murals and like looks, it's very like, you know, not fancy, not, not a big deal. And we're so close to the band, it, you know, there's just probably like 400, I don't even know, a couple hundred people there. 
the Italians are like super into it. They're yelling like, viva la fish, viva la fish, and they're like, clapping. <laughs> yeah. And we were all just like starry eyed, like on another level. And in the separate, it was super hot. It was like, you know, July in Europe, Southern Italy, and I guess not Southern, Northern Italy was hot. And during set break, they like open up the doors and everybody just like, including the band, like runs into the river and swims. Wow. And it was just like, so incredible. Like I look over, I can see Fishman's like dress, like floating in the water. Like it was like, I've never forget it. It was, it was the best. That's cool. Yeah. Like the band was just, I think so happy. Those shows aren't like incredible musically. Like they're just fine. Sure. But but like, who cares? You know, it was ex- so, yeah. yeah, the experience and also just the band being able to like blow off, you know, they're going back and doing this huge arena tour, you know, like 96, they're going to play it. You know, it's like they're doing huge New Year's. I mean, it's the first New Year's they won't, they won't be at the garden again. They're doing like, I think Boston garden again. I think it's like Philly and then Boston, but you know, they're, they've made it right. Like they're, they're the the band, the big jam band now, yeah. you know, and yeah. for them to go and just connect with fans and blow do like off stress steam. free. Yeah, yeah. Like they opened for Santana like a ton that summer. Yeah. I saw one of those shows because Paige got us tickets because he saw us trying to jump into the venue. We were like trying to break in because I only went to one because the Santana tickets were like really expensive. Sure. I don't even remember, but they were too much for like a bunch of like poor fish kids to yeah. afford. And so we were th- like, there was like eight of us that went to Colon to see them open for Santana. And so we were trying to like throw our packs over. We found this spot where like the hill and the fence and we were like, we could do that. You know, it was a bit of a risk, but we were like, whatever. And Paige walks by and like sees us and he's like, Oh, he's like, what are you guys doing? You know, like, we're like, Paige, we're trying to get into the show. We can't afford it. And he's like, all right. So he like put us on the guest list for, he got eight tickets for us. No shit. So nice. Yeah. They were just, they were awesome. So then we went into that show and like stood right in front of Paige. I'm always been page side if I can. Yeah. Yeah. Page side, rich side always. But I was right in front of Paige and we were like freaking out. And he was like, yeah, I know who you guys are. Like, yeah, I see you. And then, of course, Santana comes on and we're like, we're out. Like, we didn't even stay. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. awful. Like, who yeah. that? We had the chance to see Carlos Santana. Like, yeah. we left. That's not where your headspace was at no. then. Mm-mm. And that's – hearing, like, all of these stories, they're amazing. And I have to, like – I have to think and believe that Paige remembers that. I don't know. Who I knows, have to right? think it. Or like th- even the whole band, like whenever you guys all went and ran and jumped in the river, like yeah. they have to remember that. Like have I you have no idea. In recent years, have you met any of the no. band members again? See, this no. is what when I hear these stories from like you and people that have like got to have really close interactions like face to face with the band. Um, some of them are like passing and fleeting, you know, it's like, I probably yeah. don't remember that, but something like that, I feel like if you were to run into Fishman or run into yeah. Paige and be like, I was at this, do you remember when we all ran and jumped in the river? They have yeah. to remember that, you know, I mean, they've had a I lot wonder. of experiences, yeah. but still like at the end of the day, like you're still in Europe, like you're going to remember doing that. Right. Yeah. And you're going to remember, I would think like. That would be a highlight in my brain, you know, like yeah. a core memory of like, yeah, no, it was super cool. We all ran and jumped in the river and like, yeah, we're playing acoustic with people outside the thing. Like, I just have to think that they would remember that. Yeah. I mean, I hope so. I don't know. If I ever get the chance, I'll definitely ask them. Do you I remember? think Tom <laughs> may have been on some of that tour in 96. So I, I've been, you know, gotten to talk to Tom a few times for, through Age of Pop. So maybe I'll ask him next time. Yeah, yeah, that would he be. He remembers, yeah, yeah. He'll, re- I mean, he'll remember truly, for sure. They, yeah, yeah. I mean, they've yeah. had so many experiences, right? Right. And for them, it's like they're just with like fans. But for us, it's like we're like with the band, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's like different. I don't know. Who knows? But that's and really is, cool. I've never thought about that. Yeah, they have to. And, it, and that's a perfect point. Like we, you know, we feel like we know them, yes, right? Yes. Because we've all seen – every YouTube video or every documentary or every book. So we know so much about their lives, but they know to us, we're all 
the same thing, really. It's like, oh, yeah, meet a fan. Here's a picture. All right. Yeah, thanks. I'll have a good show. See you there. You know, like we're exactly. just wash, rinse, repeat. Like but <laughs> big things like that. I would bet that they remember something. Like, oh, yeah. They might not remember you specifically, but they'll be like, oh, yeah. yeah, I remember doing that, you know. That's well, cool, now though. I know what I'll ask them if I ever see them. So thanks, Clay. That's really you have good to. advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And see me, like, even not having those experiences, if I were to ever, like, even make eye contact with one of them, you know, yeah. at a certain point, and then got a chance to meet them, I'd be like, do you remember it was in 2016? Uh, I was coming out <laughs> of the place, and, like, I, like, waved at you. Do you remember me? I was wearing a red shirt. <laughs> I would be that asshole. <laughs> They'd be yeah, like, mm-hmm, totally, <laughs> yeah, totally remember, totally remember you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's goofy. Um, Megan, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, once again, plug HF Pod or anything else that you have going on or coming up, um, and then we'll wrap up and I'll let you get back to your family. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Clay. This has been just so fun. I could talk about fish with you forever. And I just love telling these stories. So thanks for giving me the opportunity. And Absolutely. yeah, HF Pod, we're on um, 4.30 Eastern time every Monday and Wednesday. And we do historical lookbacks. And now we are diving in next week. So like the third week of October, we are diving back into fall 2021. So that's going to be really fun. Yeah. yeah. And then we do when, when the band's on tour, we do um, recaps the day after at 1 p.m., so check those out. I think we might do a little bit to follow this Goose Tab tour too because we're really excited about that. And it's yeah, we're on Twitter. Yeah, Instagram. I'm so excited. I'm definitely going to see a show and I'm pumped. So it's going to be yeah. fun to watch. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, thank you again for being on. Hang out. I'm going to end this recording and we'll talk logistics. Awesome. 